Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, I want to show you a new geometry node tree asset that I've created. It's available on my Gumroad and to my Patreon subscribers. It lets you take an image that you've imported, say using the import images as planes option, and quickly and easily create a custom frame for it. This is great for setting up your interior scenes where you want to throw some images up on your walls, but you don't want to have to mess with the frames too much. This add-on is specifically built for Blender 3.5, which is going to be coming out any day now. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So to start, I'm going to use the Import Images as Planes add-on. I'll pick an image that I want to use. I'm going to turn off Use Alpha. And then I'm going to say Import Images as Planes. If I go to my end panel, I see that the dimensions of this are 1 meter on the y-axis and 1.7 meters on the x-axis. So this is a pretty large image. I'm going to scale this down so that the y-axis is more around 250 millimeters, or about 10 inches. And then I'm going to apply my scale. Control A, apply scale. It's really important for this geometry node setup that your scale is applied and that once you start working with it, if you adjust your image at all, you do it in edit mode. Now that I have my image ready, I'm going to go to my asset browser. The name of this node is FrameMaker, and since I'm in Blender 3.5, I can simply drag this geometry node tree onto my object. The first thing to do in our outliner, you'll find a new collection called FrameMaker Frames Disable Me. Just uncheck this box. This is where all the profiles for our frames live. It needs to be imported into your scene, but we don't need to see it. Now we can start making adjustments. First of all, let's give our frame and our mat a material. So here in my modifier panel, I'll go to frame material, and I've already created some materials in this scene that I'm going to use. So I'll use this black frame material, and then for the mat material, I'll use this beige mat, just so that we have some definition between our image, our mat, and our frame. Next, I'll want to adjust the overall size of my frame. Since we adjusted this image down to about 10 inches tall, I'm going to go ahead and make this frame 16 inches tall. And since I didn't get an exact amount of how wide this image was, I'm just going to change the overall frame width so that it looks about right. We can change the profile width of our frame and we can change its thickness. There are also about 25 frame styles that you can use, and with each version of this node tree, I'm trying to add a few. So you can cycle through to find a frame style that you like. I'll go with this one. If you've picked a frame style that you want to completely shade smooth, you can do that here. I would recommend that once you have your frame dialed in, to apply this modifier and then choose Shade Auto Smooth. Auto Smooth shading isn't an option yet for dynamically created geometry with geometry nodes, but I have a feeling it will be in the future. If for some reason you want to change the aspect ratio of your image, you can do that with the scale photo horizontal and vertical. Do know that you can overdrive the size of your frame, so be careful of that. If you want to set an absolute size for your photo, check this box, and then you can put in an absolute size. So if I wanted this image to be 8 inches by 8 inches, I could put in that there and say set absolute photo size. If you already know the size of the image that you want, say a 4 by 6, and the image that you used is already cropped to that aspect ratio, this is a very good option to use. If you've gotten this all set up and you want to use a different image here, you can always choose to override the photo material. Then you can just choose a different image from your materials. So if I were to import another image, I could simply choose override photo material 
and put that in here. Next, we can change the thickness of our photo, which means it will bring it up and down on the z-axis. That way, if you have a frame that sits a lot higher, you can move the mat and the photo upwards. You can tweak the opening of your mat using the Mat Tweak Width and Height options. These are both crop inward options. So you can't go to the minus and create gaps, but you can simply use them to crop in on your photo this way. And the same as with our image, we can change the thickness of our mat. And we can change the material for our mat as well. If for some reason you need to change the name of the UV map that's being used to place materials, you can do that here. In general, just leave this as UV map, unless you really need to change it for some reason. If we're happy with what we have, but we want to make some additional tweaks, we can simply apply our modifier. This is now no longer editable with geometry nodes. Instead, it's editable as a mesh. So what I'll do is I'll right click and say Shade Auto Smooth. Next I want to add just a little pop of color to my frame. So I'm going to select this ridge and assign a new material to it. So there it is, a photo frame generator that you can use in your scenes. If you'd like to pick up this node, it's available on my Gumroad. Also, this is available as a download for my Patreon subscribers. I'll put a link to both in the description. Speaking of my Patreon, I want to give a shout out to all my supporters. Your continued support is making projects like this possible. Thank you so much. So anyway, I hope this project inspires you to make something awesome. And if you do pick it up, I hope it makes decorating your scenes that much easier. So until next time, I'll catch you later.